Greetings, I'm Trevane Glory and welcome to a new first look at a game. This is Flashpoint Campaign's Southern Storm, developed by On Target Simulations and published by oh, it's Slytherin Limited or Matrix Games. I can never remember which is which, um, but anyway, Slytherin Matrix. A game I'm quite excited to, to dive into. I used to love playing, is it Avalon Hills? MBT? Back in the day, back in the days when an M1 was a uh, fantastic new thing, um, similarly T80s. Uh, but anyway, yes, so I wanted to have a, a look at this. haven't played it before. I've run through the first two tutorial scenarios and I'm going to run through the third here live in front of an audience um, and see how I get on. So Flashpoint Campaigns is a fast-paced game. No, it's not. Not in this occasion. Uh, I expect this to be quite slow paced in terms of gameplay. Um, I'd also like to point out that uh, during the turn resolution phase your subordinates will take over and do their best to make my orders happen. Inevitably difficulties, time lags and setbacks will happen and that's all my subordinates fault, it's got nothing to do with me. So yes, let's jump in see what sort of a mess I can make of this. Actually just remembered something. Let's have a look at the scenario. Uh, tutorial 3, advanced features. So, tutorial 1, uh, you're dealing with just um, armoured and armoured vehicles. Uh, tutorial 2 introduces uh, helicopters and... Um, I've forgotten what else is. Oh yes, some um, uh, air defence units. Helicopters and aircraft, A-10s in this case. This tutorial, advanced features, let's see it, added in, we've still got the stingers etc, helicopters, we've got engineering platoons, short span bridging vehicles, two fist observation vehicles and one uh, ground surveillance radar vehicle. We've also got three batteries of self-propelled howitzers and off map three batteries of MRLS rocket launchers. Uh, so everything else we leave as it is. Computer opponent, I'm playing as NATO and yeah, whistle pipe defending the city. We've got custom presets because I've disabled the enemy units are always visible. Um, yeah, I'll leave that as it is and I've taken off both of the checks in here so that we've got full fog of war. Allow gathering of full information on visible enemy units. I'm going to keep that on for tutorial purposes. Here we go. So, uh, okay. I've got this uh, using only a, or trying to record only a portion of my ultra wide display. I think I've got it set up properly. Oh, looks okay. Uh, <laughs> just off here to the right, uh, off camera, I have the manual open and ready. Speaking of manuals open and ready, if I come up to... Oh, I need to get rid of this first. Uh, let's look at this briefing. Welcome to the Tutorial 3 Advanced Features Scenario. You're commanding NATO forces and have eight hours to accomplish the mission described in your scenario briefing. We'll get to that. Your forces are composed of 11 groups of units, extensive descriptions of which are found in the operations, uh, personnel and logistics and fire support staff reports. Information about the opposing forces are available from the intel staff report. You may now drag and drop your starting units into any group set up hex, subject to the usual stacking limits. You're responsible for a total of 15 Rec 8, 5 Hilo, 11 Tank, 13 APC, 16 HQ, 8 Engineering, 8 Air Defence, 35 Self-Propelled Artillery, 20 Utility, 8 Depot and 4 Air Subunits worth 2,005 points, uh, 2,005 Victory Points. Remember these assets are all but irreplaceable. Good luck. Thank you. I was looking up here. Or is it here? Yes, open the field manuals folder and 03 is what I'm after and let's see, can I drag that out of there? I can. So this is what I've opened. 
again, you're likely to see this pop up from time to time. Uh, let's begin this. Right. So somewhere down here, deployment adjustment, developing a plan. Now, so everything from section four is about this new uh, tutorial scenario. Let's jump down to somewhere about here. Okay, so we'll have a look at most of these things. And I do want to try and get to some turn resolution, not spend too long looking at the menus, uh, menus, <laughs> briefing reports, etc. But uh, you get all this provided in the game. Uh, and you're expected to go through this, familiarise yourselves with it all before you jump into the turn resolution, including, uh, it shows you here, for example, yeah, you can see this. Uh, we're starting over in the west. We expect uh, to encounter Soviet resistance here. Uh, first line of defence, probably recce units. And then further uh, resistance an objective Baker, Charlie, and eventually objective Delta, which is our major victory points. Go away. And it does then give you suggested lines of advance. Um, it gives you... This, this here is a hunt order for your scout helo. Then you've got lines of advance. You've got red route one and gold route two. Uh, suggested routes of advance again, uh, take into account Soviet units that might have been covering the hills over here or wide open terrain that we have to cross over here. So you get a whole hell of a lot of information in here. And it is, it's, it's a bit like Gravity Team Tactics in the sense that I can spend uh, two or three hours preparing for a battle that lasts maybe one hour. Anyway, this is disappearing off screen now to bring it back maybe at some point if it arises. Uh, yes, okay, right. So, that's that. We need to look at our briefings. So we've got, first of all, scenario information. And just looking off to the left to make sure that and still recording the right things. Advanced features. Right, let's look at the mission here. Commander, during the night, right, so the, the, the first two scenarios, you, they're all fought around Bad Durham. Uh, we were defending two different types of scenarios. Uh, the first one has you just using your uh, armoured cav, your tanks, to defend Bad, Hur Bad Durheim. Uh, so you're in close and personal. In the next scenario, you're standing off a bit further back uh, and using your air support. Uh, so in both those battles, the Soviets were attacking and crossing the, uh, the Mosul River. In this one, during the night, the Soviets retreated from the Bad Durheim area. They have blown numerous bridges to slow any counterattack in pursuit. The Soviets have also, in the past couple of hours, launched a small number of short-range nuclear surface-to-surface uh, -surface missiles. Of concern in this sector is one that struck Schwenigen an hour or so ago, and that's this area up here. Um, can't draw a uh, box around it. You are ordered to keep your forces south of the site and out of the contamination and radiation from this site. It does, the game does simulate NBC uh, warfare. Uh, if units go through an irradiated area, if they're in something like a tank, uh, they might be safe, but they then have to decontaminate, clean the vehicle uh, later on. Uh, if they are like, on foot, or if they're not in a secured vehicle, then you need to decontaminate the troops, or else their efficiency absolutely tanks. Uh, so afraid anyway, I've not encountered it in the game. Your mission is to use the supplied engineering assets to clear any obstacles and bridge the river south of Bad Durheim. And take out the Soviet forces setting up a hasty defence in the area of Trossingen. Trossingen uh, will be... Let's, 
and reduce the map. This area here, the 2000 point objective. So as I said, um, we're expecting resistance down on the ridge line here and then at these victory locations. You'll have access to both on-map fires from tube artillery and off-map MLRS in addition to your air support. You're to launch your operation immediately. Intelligence reports say the Soviets are using heavy jamming and have many aircraft in the area for operational use. Plan accordingly. I can't see the information on the jamming here just now, but we'll look at that in a minute. At your disposal are a handful of armoured scout sections, M3s and scout troops, two platoons of M1A1 tanks, a section of self-propelled mortars, two headquarters units and support. Added to your force are two sections of Stinger manpads, a platoon, a platoon of SPAG, a scout helicopter section, two attack helicopter sections, that's A1Hs, two close air support sections of A10s, two general engineering platoons, two engineering short span bridging vehicles, two fist observation vehicles and one GSR, three batteries of M109s, three batteries of MRLS rocket launchers. So that was our scenario intel information. Our operations staff report. You can get loads of information. So the big yellow N de uh, designates a irradiated zone, nuclear strike. And again, in terms of the mission, it gives you the same information about the nuclear strike up here. And the mission is to clear the obstacles, bridge the river and cross. Uh, so this is exactly the same as we saw in the scenario information. The first couple of paragraphs there. Each hour is at 04.10 you will have eight hours to complete your mission. Dawn is around 0359 and dusk around 2059. Right, and again, information on the units that we have. On average, your force contains regular units, regular units that are ready. They have plentiful ammo and good morale. Your assigned starting area is bounded by map columns 4 to 14 inclusive and map rows 14 to 29 inclusive. back in to our own guys. No, stay where you are, Spag. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah, so it's just like well, map columns. It would be grid references, I suppose, in, in real life. Uh, but uh, what was it up to? Uh, columns 4 to 14. So there's 14 there. That's the edge of our map. So it's, it's, uh, the hexes are the columns. I could turn on the hex overlay, but I don't like it. Victory conditions. You must secure more than your initial share of VPs to win. A decisive victory requires 75% of the total VPs won. Tactical requires 66. Marginal requires 54. And then just more information on the victory points. The map overlay, if we put in that, uh, it shows... Uh, an overlay, can I big in that at all? Mm, yes, there we are. Uh, some of it's gone off the screen. No, we're all right. Uh, so yeah, it just shows the deployment areas for various different units. If we come down again, it gives you the, the location and the size in terms of number of units of each of the, what's represented by, represented by each of the counters. Uh, sit rep and uh, command cycle overview. I mean, if, if you're not familiar with the game, both sides have a command cycle, and you can see up here, as yes you can, uh, this is the number of minutes for each command cycle. So, for us at the moment, for NATO forces, it's 36 minutes. This is based on basically your command and control, how close you are to your, uh, the units are to the commander, how fatigued the units are or aren't. And in this particular case, it's uh, affected by, if we go back to our mission briefing, uh, the Soviets are using heavy jamming. So they're using electronic warfare to disrupt communications, which is extending the length of time it takes for our orders to get through to our units. The Soviets uh, are at 27 minutes per command cycle. So basically that means they get to give orders more frequently than we do to begin with. In the first couple of scenarios, this was around 15 to 20 minutes, just below 20 minutes. 
So yeah, that's what this is about here, this uh, command cycle overview. Again, we've got a summary of the units. We've got a bit more detail about readiness, morale and ammo. And everything is pretty much at the, the maximum that we can get just now. So that's just information on all of our troops. Engineering. Uh, again, it just tells you where we have them. We've got the two bridging assets uh, at 819 and 720. Uh, there and there. Uh, no dedicated main clearing. And we've got a couple of engineered units. Air support, we've got the A-10s, close air support. I'm not too sure what this is actually, I still need to work this out. Um, I, th I read something in one of the tutorials, must have been the last tutorial, uh, that seemed to suggest that the aircraft wouldn't come in if it was raining. But I've, I suppose I've, I've not had rain in the, the couple of scenarios that I've played. So we'll find out what that actually means. Uh, over here we've got airspace control, strong Warsaw Pact. That's also shown up here. So basically that means that uh, we can expect interdiction. We might not get our aircraft or our helos on map or on map for very long. Weather forecast, uh, again, the, the colour here and also the colour up here basically shows the level of illumination. So we're sunrise is at 0359. So for 10 minutes after sunrise, this will change colour as the time passes. And it shows you again, going up to blue skies, a bit overcast, uh, but no rain. Emitters, uh, we've got our SPAG and our uh, ground support radar, ground, what's GSR? Ground support, ground surveillance radar, ground surveillance isn't it? Um, you can turn off the emitters if you want to try and keep them stealthy to begin with. Then you get diaries, just what's happened with each of the units, mission capable subunits, uh, Basically it shows that each bar represents the number of starting platforms. The dark part represents the number of starting platforms which are still fully mission capable. So that's more of use uh, if you're playing a campaign, I suppose. And after the battle, you can see how this is this has changed. It does show you the, the losses as you go through. Uh, state of the 11th Armoured Cavalry Regiment by unit type, etc. So started with 143 units, still got 143, which is good going for me. Uh, and then it's just into a bit more uh, specific details of the types of vehicles down here. Okay, so that's our... Um, uh, that was our uh, Ops Operational Staff Report. Yes. Go to our intelligence briefing. Again, we start off with the same sort of information. It does repeat information, uh, certain aspects of it in different screens, obviously. Uh, but this is showing you where the Soviet Motor Rifle Regiment is expected to be, bounded by map columns 26 to 45 and 8 to 24. So, uh, columns 26 to 45, so that is here expected to be on that line, that line roughly. And rows 8 to 24. So 8 obviously is up that level all the way down. Okay, so the intelligence isn't reporting them down right in this area. But that's, I suppose, the, the regiment might be... Can I move this out of the way a wee bit? Uh, there we go. Yeah, so the regiment might well be, the most part, uh, around these three victory points with just a few recce units and providing some sort of rear guard or initial resistance to us. 
You can also look at the enemy sit rep. So similar to ours, it shows the command uh, cycle at the top and it shows uh, where they think our units are and what we have. And it shows you any units that have been spotted. And then uh, in the intelligence summary of active enemy, active enemy assets. So they think we've got 20 to 30 recon, 1 to 10 helicopter, 10 to 20 tanks, 40 to 50 armoured carriers, blah, 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 blah. Reported kills and claims. Hopefully we'll see this fill up as we go through. Uh, the weather forecast. Yeah, overcast conditions. We have strong wind to begin with and then it eases off a bit. So that, that mean affects elements in the game. I mean, the, ob the obvious, one, obvious one would be smoke screens. Uh, but things like the, the illumination, the cloud ceilings obviously affect visibility as well. NATO obviously have, am I saying obviously a lot? Probably am. Uh, NATO have thermal imaging equipment and going back to this. So dusk and dawn, the change in the ground temperature is so rapid uh, that it disrupts thermal imaging. So the effectiveness is reduced uh, both at dusk and dawn. Uh, and obviously it's <laughs> very advantageous at night, but it's not perfect on a consistent basis. Still better than what the Soviets would have. Uh, and actually in the system's impact here, it shows you. So reduced artillery, reduced effectiveness of smart munitions due to low cloud ceilings and unfavor unfavorable conditions to smoke curtains due to strong winds. Air defense artillery, reduced detection and identification of aircraft due to low cloud ceilings all through the day. Electronic warfare report. And again, you can see the high jamming that the Soviets are undertaking. This will delay friendly orders transmission by 36%. Uh, and you've got forecasts of what we can expect from our side, at least. We don't know what the Soviets will be up to. Uh, we've not spotted enemy, any enemy of map assets. Personnel and logistics. Uh, no units have triggered staff alerts at this present time. So you can go through, you can look in a great level of detail. I don't know if this, no, the font doesn't scale. I don't think I can change the font either. So apologies if it's a bit small to make out. Um, but yeah, just as you'd expect, information on the armaments and other systems that an A10 has here. Uh, we've got the same, we can expand out our uh, armoured cavalry, our self-propelled self -propelled artillery that we've got or MLRS. Reinforcements and redrawal, we have none scheduled. The ammunition, everybody's got 100% of their basic load on hand. Okay, uh, fire support. Again, we've got lists of the different assets that we have, including the close air support on here. We have our fire missions, nothing pre-planned. The fire support control centre, and we've got nothing queued up there either. And the final button is off map artillery. Uh, once again, just information on what we have sitting uh, in terms of the MLRS and our aircraft. Okay, so we've seen from the tutorial briefing uh, what we're expected to do and suggested routes of advance so we're just going to stick with that now we need to bridge over south of Bad Durham so somewhere down in here we can also get the blown bridges and do we want to make use of the autobahn for the few, well that would be what, each hex I think is half a click. 
So three or four kilometers worth of water band for a bit of speed. I think I think we're going to probably avoid that. So if the Soviets are up on here, with some Litreki teams with anti-tank missiles, we'd be better trying to cross south of that bridge. You can check out lines of sight if we um, shift click on a hex. Thought you could. Did before. Hey, you. Ah, uh, yes. This the green hex is the green outline here is the line of sight for the units. Right. I don't know why that didn't work before, but yeah, we so we can get the line of sight. So from here. Yeah, they can still cover the crossings down here. would have to be, in fact, even down there, they can see the whole of the river if they're sitting up there. Yep, so there's no masked crossing point at all, other than potentially here, but not from up there, right. Okay. Let's get some units. We've got in here. Okay. First and the second. Let's have you both down in there. Imagine this will be the third and the fourth. Yep. You come down to. Uh, and this is again something I'm struggling with. It talks about shift select. But when you shift to lake, it doesn't always seem to move them as a group. So we'll bring an armoured cab, we're just going to move everybody up. Get them across the bridges as quickly as possible. What's your line of sight like here? You can see right across the valley. But, um... What have we done now? Right, I think what I'm, doing, I'm actually pressing L instead of Shift when I click on the X. Right, so from these points we can't see. I was thinking about if I sat the tanks up there, but we can't see up onto that ridge from that far back. In there is slightly better, but it's still even then. Do it again. Yeah. So we can't really get decent overwatch positions up here. We have to rely on artillery. Okay, we've got our Sam. So you come down there, but we'll put Sam's up on the hill. And put this bag in there as well. Our own healers will keep back where they are for... Well, no, we'll send a scout out for a look. I remember seeing scout hunting around this area in the tutorial uh, manual. Let's bring the engineers down. And you come down here. Okay. 
or maybe I put you south of there. Bring our tanks in. We've got second Sam. Which stick in there. For GSR, put you up on the hill. Nah, don't want engine uh, getting myself mixed up. Let's put the engineers back a bit. Bring the bridging sections down here. Um, Maybe put you together. See all goes there. Our mortals go there. And the squadron HQ. Like so. Um, let's have a look at the unit dashboard here. We haven't looked into this at all, really. Uh, regular experience, a recce roll. Uh, this is a standard operating procedure, which we'll look at before we kick off, because I want to change some, probably. Uh, Subunits, we have the information on the vehicle itself, type of vehicle and the armaments, the emitters, detectors. Um, has two lift points for tactical transport, directly supported by blah blah blah. It's amphibious, has got no claimed kills, no active contacts. 100% readiness. Okay, that's an interesting, it's amphibious. Uh, yes, M3s are amphibious as well. I don't know that I want anybody swimming across the river though. Right. SOPs. Let's look at SOPs. And I'm going to do it. There's different ways that you can do this. You can do it individually per unit. And I'm going to go into th this. Uh, tactical initiative. Moderate. Uh, I want them to stick more to my plan than having to completely free reign. Uh, substantial losses because we're attacking. Standoff range two hexes is probably okay. Direct fire we will have maximum range. Relocate when direct fire losses I think. Yeah. It's either that or never. Right, movement. Well, let's prefer concealment and avoid NBC. Minefield contact. Stop and breach. I'll stop and reduce. Okay. Because we have limited resources. Passengers dis disembark at one from end pass. I think we'll keep that. Carriers support passengers when empty. New supply trigger at 25%, then recover to 100. The thing I'm thinking about is like how long it takes to resupply from 25 back up to 100. I was wondering whether a resupply at 50 or maybe a recover to 75. I can't leave it and see how we got on. Uh, and apply to all units of the same type. So we've got all six of our Bradleys. I'm not going to have it for the scouts though. OK, 
Okay. And tanks. And again, soap manager. I should use control K, but I'm, I was leaning on my elbow there and couldn't reach the keyboard. Tactical initiative again is moderate. Acceptable losses will be substantial. Preferred standoff for these guys, I'm going to put at six. Uh, maximum range, relocate when taking direct fire losses. And again, concealment and avoid NBC. And stop and reduce. Well, I, I suppose some of it's slightly different from the, the Bradleys. Support passengers, oh, I keep, uh, apply to all units of the same type again. And that's not going to apply to our HQs. Let's go for this bag. And again, moderate acceptable losses. So substantial, you've got to and you've got to support the other units, you can't be buggering off uh, earlier than they would. Threat fire discipline. Maximum range. Relocate after receiving any fire. Concealment and avoid NBC again. Uh, stop and reduce. Apply to units of the same type. Sam's. Yeah, okay. Happy with that. Hmm, about our engineers. It would be the engineers under bridging units. Okay. Same again. Moderate and substantial. Uh, maximum range. Relocate when after taking direct fire losses. Blah blah blah. Let's see if I get uh, mainfield contact. Contact stop and reduce definitely. No HQ. So this is another way to do it. Edit the order SOP. Uh, Moderate and substantial. Preferred standoff. Put it to Texas as well. Uh, refuse fire. Relocate when receiving any fire. Alright, apply to all units with the same type. Yeah. Okay. And what I could have done was uh, set the standard standard operating procedure for the HQ and then applied it to uh, self and all subordinates and then later on, because I will be adjusting SOPs as we go through the scenario, uh, I could have changed it for the tanks for example. Okay. Uh, Scout helicopter. Stay moderate. Acceptable loss is minimal. Standoff range six. Refuse fire. Yeah, you you uh, have been set by the previous salt for the deckies. Uh, for the um, matches. Moderate minimal. Four hex is, is probably okay. Direct fire at maximum range. Relocate when receiving any fire. Um, and this doesn't really apply. Proceed. Right. I do plan to try and move my artillery around um, to avoid counter battery, but just in case, relocate when after each fire mission. 
maximum range moderate not moderate concealment and avoid NBC uh, yep fine right getting there so setting orders I'm going to start off with the Kiowa. So if I right click on you and then hunt. And if we bring you down here, and then we're all, all going to be south of there, but move you to there for now. And then as per the previous tutorial, we do a run down behind our own troops. Maybe actually, um, I don't want that. Do it again. That's something that you, I don't think you can delete waypoints after you've set them. Uh, so I come down here. As far as there, I was just going to move this leg again a bit closer. So if we do that, commit, uh, Federal Destination screen, and then we can move the waypoints around, should we wish to. It's following the road there, even though it's a helicopter. Okay. And in here, we select both units. I'm going to have you move deliberately down to there and then to th that point roughly um, hold there but I'm actually going to have you go up there and right this the, the two units if you give them a group order give them a destination they will fan out usually when they get to the end And I do the same with you, move deliberate to there, and then you can come down to here. Commit and hold, and there we go. We've got one unit heading down there, the other one up into the woods. I want them both in the same hex. Engineers. I want you to move deliberate to there and then you come down here and if I've read this correctly you commit, you build a bridge, you set the direction we want the bridge um, that way or that way go that direction build a bridge that is an interesting route to take. Why would you do that? Okay. Forget that then. Uh, hold. Move deliberate. To there. To there. And then to there. Commit that. And again, build the bridge. So. The other unit is going to do something similar then. Move deliberate. Cross to there. Down into here. And we'll have you come to this point. And again, we'll build a bridge to the northeast. Ah, I suppose that, that's preferring concealment, isn't it? Explains at least that one. Right, the other two units of Bradley's, or the other two, yeah, two sections of Bradley's. Move deliberate up to there, then down to here, and we'll have you sit just in behind and hold. 
that's not the one you're after, it's there, there, I don't want you into that position. Tanks, it's a wee bit, well, I could tell that's a wee bit, um, or it feels like it could be a wee bit better, a wee bit easier. Let's make sure that you follow a sort of decent route, but again, that's not where I wanted to click. Move to Liberate, all the way to there, down into there, and then stop somewhere up there. Commit and hold. And adjust you, adjust you, and adjust you. Maybe not exactly the same as the other one, but then again, maybe it is. Right, air defence, and uh, move deliberate to there, and use screen. And again, we'll shift you up there. This little orange dot here shows that the emitter in that vehicle is active. I'm going to, I think, have you maybe sit up on this ridge as well. So if you just head up from that point, move you down off there, and everyone starts to move. Self-propelled mortar, you're going to move deliberate. Down there, down to there, then Cross in here, somewhere around there will be fine, and yeah, you can be on call just in case you're needed straight away. Two engineers, everyone's moving deliberate here, through to there, down in there, and you can just sit back here. Hold there. Like that and that. Right, the HQ again, deliberate move up to there. And maybe just a view stop in here. Uh, you hold as well. I'm not sure if that's really the best. And I was going to put the SAM with the HQ, but let's not. Just have you up to there. And then you can stop down in here. Screen there. Right, so is that everyone got orders? Apart from the uh, squadron HQ. Let's have you just move not too far forward, but there is a thing about uh, potentially signal intercept identifying the squadron HQ's position, so it radios out its orders to everyone, and then it scoots over here, and you set up to resupply uh, default. That's okay. You're going out to do that. I'm going to leave you back here where you are. And this other spotter. What's the line of sight like from down here? Rubbish. So you get no line of sight. Something's that something's not right there. That's hmm. well, it's definitely not giving me what I had before. Right. Get rid of that.
how do you deselect a unit? I don't want you selected any longer. I don't know. Right, never mind. I wanted to check and see what the line of sight was like from here. Well, that does actually look a bit like... No. It's not giving me line of sight at all. Something's up with that. So, I shall just have you... Maybe move hasty. To there. Across here. Down to there. And maybe have you sit there for now. Right. And there are Artillery pieces. Let's use this. You I want some smoke down to screen this area off. So, uh, barrage? Yes. Smoke. And we're bridging here and here. So let's some smoke down there, 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 there. We've got some units heading in there. They, they might potentially be vulnerable from that axis. So add another one there. I think that's enough. Commit and One hundred and twenty rounds. I'm going to drop this down to five missions. Let's see. Drop that to six. We need to do it for each one. That leaves us obviously some ammunition to lay down further smoke screens later on. So I'll do that. And then with our other two, let's have you gain a battery. You're going to suppress. Here. I suppose we could do all of that. Settle for that. AG suppression. And again, we've got 168 rounds. Let's make it ten. And apply. And you finally some sort of thing. Barrage suppression. So that was all around there. Let's have you 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 and once again, ten unit, um, ten rounds each. Okay, I could probably do more. Probably should do more, but I really do want to get some ton resolution in this video before we bring it to a halt. But as you see, I'm very much enjoying myself. Some of the, the clicking and etc. it's a wee bit cumbersome feeling, but overall I am having fun here. So let's 
that um, turn resolution. Have I done everything? It does recommend that you save game after you've done your setup. Uh, tutorial 3. Um, start the original. Okay. Just in case anything happens, you don't want to have to go through all your setup again. So let's have a look, see what happens. This massive table here is our events log, essentially. So it's showing at the moment everyone's got orders. Um, there's a claim there. B Troop claims one contact destroyed in Hex 2624. He was on the move, spotted the sea, it looks like. I'm guessing that's the uh, dragon's teeth. Okay, so they've blocked off all the roads. Our keel was not taking any fire, which is good. And you can see up in the timer here, clicking on through the um, command cycle. For any more clicks at rep, 3rd Armour Cavalry Regiment Troop moved to Liberate Orders has... Nothing much is happening actually. That's sit rep. I zoomed out a bit so that I could spot anything, see if anything was spotted up here, but the key were reported apparently no enemy contacts. And you can pause the game, you can't give orders when you're paused, but uh, you can, for example, if there was combat, so you can um, pause and look into the results of the combat. So we come back down. Scout spotted obstacles. I seem to have lost that claim. It disappeared off the bottom of the list there. I only noticed the one claim, which was, I think, in here. And actually, if you zoom in further, if units are wiped out, you can see it leaves wee crosses behind, but in here you can see craters showing that there's been artillery called in. Okay, let's get back on. All that's happening just now is the smoke dissipating up in... Uh, sh was it Schweningen? Your aircraft. Uh, I think I might have the game sounds the volume turned down a bit too low, but it was bloody loud when I started it. Um, ah, the smoke dissipated already. So maybe I was a wee bit skimpy with my... What was it? Did I drop six rounds there? Sure, the guys will be reporting back if it causes them an inconvenience. But I was expecting it to last longer than so that's well, I suppose 25 minutes, maybe 20 minutes the smoke lasted. Can't complain about that. And I suppose what it's simulating is that if we were firing for a duration of eight minutes. Um, so it's not as if the smoke lands and it lasts for a turn as you get in some other games. It lasts for a period of time based on how long you're, how many rounds you're firing and how long 
your final four. Uh, illumination is now 40%. You can see, as I said, the, the colours changed in the bar up here to show that the sun is rising. Uh, actually, weather dawn is overcast. Vis visibility is 10,000 metres. And, yeah, we're still going. We haven't uh, moved into the next orders phase. That's right, I did one, two, three, four, and then back up there for five. Hmm, so, no contact, which I suppose is a good thing. Don't quite know why the map changed colour as much there. Right. The game resolution phase is now over, the American order phase is about to begin. Proceed. So, obviously, a bit like Gravity Team again, we shouldn't be giving orders every single phase to all our units. Uh, you are meant to give them orders to advance and carry out their mission. The reason that I've not done that here is because obviously I need to get the bridges in place before we can order units across, and our bridging sections are still away back here. So it's going to take a wee while for them to get forward. And bridge jingling bridges, I think I saw, takes time. 30 minutes, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a break in and we'll run through the next turn in the next part. But before we do that, let's have a look at some of our uh, intelligence reports. So I reported kills and claims. So B Troop claimed one recce unit killed. And that's our grand total. The threat assessment hasn't changed. If we look at our ops and our sit rep. So we're still predicting 36 minutes um Command cycle overviews, which is not great. Uh, we have no losses, obviously. So there's nothing else really to see right now. What is our, yeah, our bridging section is what I actually wanted to look at. So it's moving with deliberate orders. It's not encountered any difficulties, doesn't seem. It's just taken a wee while to get there. I suppose you're driving along with a big bridge. Well, a small bridge. Okay. If I was more familiar with the game, I probably know there's a few more things that we could look at before we moved on, but... I, as it is, we've gone just over an hour. I think that's probably enough for just now. So, yes, I'll put a break in here and I'll come back and we'll run through the next uh, 36 minutes, I suppose, um, in the next part, maybe even the next 72 minutes. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a comment, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and I hope to see you again next time. Cheers.